Hi guys, Scrappers. I got a delivery today. Well, actually I actually had to go and pick it up because it was just sitting at the post shop at the delivery center for so long. Well, um, I've been waiting for this for a long time actually, or quite a few weeks. Um, I had one order done and it didn't go through and so I had to reorder and But it's my furnace. Okay. Now the box is quite squishy. It's been rolling around. You wouldn't believe how many countries this actually went. This came from Lithuania. Then it went to Poland. Then it went to Hungary. Then it went to Germany. Then, then it went to China, then to Singapore, and then finally to Australia. And all in a space of about a week and a half. And then it sat in Australia for about a week till I started um, questioning it and uh, asking, well, I'm going to come and pick it up if you're not going to deliver it. But uh, I hope it's all in one piece because the box is really softened up. It's been rolling around, so... We'll give it a go. It's like a gas hose. It looks like I'm going to have to put it together. Oh. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than I expected. <laughs> Gosh. It's, uh, it's like, I think the glass part just fell out. I hope it's, uh, I'm going to probably take it to a gas centre and just make sure that it's actually, um, it's actually good enough. Uh, how am I going to get this out? Wow. Super heavy. Gosh. Wrapped for freshness. Yeah. Interesting. Gosh. Okay. I mean, being so heavy, I would have thought it was going to be in a in a better box. I mean, that's the box. I wouldn't even send uh, anything in this internationally. So the fact that, uh, you know, this is about 60 pounds. So it's not going to surprise me if there is some damage.
Wow. So that's refractory cement. Wow, that's huge. And it's all the heavy duty one with the, it's not, I didn't just want the refractory wool because that doesn't last that long and, and uh, I wanted the cement, but mostly because I wanted to, you know, I know you can make stuff like this and not that I'm very good at making things like welding stuff and all that, but I wanted to buy one so I could see how it's made and see if I can replicate it because um, yeah I'd like to build an even bigger one probably with a whole that whole size um, just as a backyard foundry um, not here but if I ever get a, a larger property um, I want to build a much bigger one that way I can do more stuff like aluminium But this one's mostly for copper. Wow. Okay. The hinge doesn't look that spectacular for the weight. I don't know how long that hinge is going to last. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's certainly strong. And... Yeah, I prefer... Like, the bigger one doesn't have a hinge like that. It's, it's more a slide open. So... If I do make one of these myself... Because I just want to see... Okay, it's got a couple of stands a little bit bent but yeah I just want to see if um, you know I can I can buy this material like this tubing it's, uh, it's only 16 millimeters thick it's it's okay and then you know just weld my own pieces and um, these you can buy these separate and you can buy even bigger ones I think this is the middle size um, so uh, you know and just make my own I thought well maybe it's you know it might be something like it's pretty hard to buy this stuff in Australia and shipping from anywhere else is usually very expensive so I thought well if I could make some here in Australia you know I might be able to sell some because uh, um, yeah this is the only piece I'd have to buy but you know could probably even if I can get someone that can make these or show me how to make put these together I'm sure I'll be able to put this together too just need to buy the components sort of like pull this apart and and seeing what it's made up of I'm sure I can buy these locally um, but if not I can always just purchase these on their own and then whack it all together Okay, well, that kind of looks like all that's to it. So this, uh, this doesn't even have a glass top. So that's strange. So uh, probably the cheapest you could probably get. Um, so obviously this goes onto the bottle but yeah I've, I still need to buy a gas bottle so I'm going to take this to the gas center when I buy the bottle and just get them to um, connect it up and test it for me just to make sure it's it's going to be safe because I'm not very confident with gas that's why I started uh, melting copper and stuff in a electric furnace but my electric furnace blew up and I don't recommend them for copper. I've got to go, I'll get it fixed, but I'm only going to save that for gold and silver when I uh, one day get to do that. So I'm assuming, oh yeah, it's 
goes in there and these bolts are just going to hold it something like that yeah interesting so well, that's it that's my huge furnace it's uh, rated at uh, 10 kilos so um, I'll get my furnace okay well that's my 10 kilo <laughs> salamander and the idea is it fits in here uh-huh so, as you can see, there's the, uh, just get that out of the way. Once you've got the crucible in there, it only leaves about, oh, barely an inch around the edges. Okay, so it makes it very difficult to get the crucible out using tongs. So I'm hoping that my well these are the tongs that I bought that I am um, they're not very long but um, they got the nice flat so this is what I thought of is to get it out like that and then put the crucible down onto a like a ring that I can then pick it up and pour so this is like stage one at least this is just to get it out of the cruise out, out of the so, yeah that should work okay and yeah I, I, I like how the tube is down to the side because you don't want the tube going straight in and to um, the flame to just hit directly onto your crucible you know you want the flame to sort of hit the side and swirl around otherwise you'll just burn a hole eventually into the crucible if it just goes straight on wow it's super heavy so yeah the direction goes down to the side here so it's going to swirl the the flame um, around it rather than uh, straight on so that's good I'm glad about that but the refractory is really really super super solid really happy with that this lid would weigh probably you know nearly 10 kilos or 20 20 odd pounds on its own it's even pretty pretty decent sized hole where I can drop in um, metals and stuff so okay well that's interesting there you go guys a new furnace big 10 kilo crucible and um, and we'll be able to mount, melt a lot of uh, copper in that, at least big pieces anyway. I don't need 10 kilos of copper at any one time. Uh, it'll be really hard to pour anyway, unless you had a really super duper um, pouring ladle. But uh, no, as long as I've got the space, and then all I have to do, you know, once it just melts, I might get about that much and pour about... I don't know about two kilos at a time five pounds just depending on the bars that I'm going to make all right well I'm excited now uh, I've got to go well still got a day or two before a couple days before Christmas like this is my Christmas present for the year it, it's uh, pretty uh, expensive um, they're about I think they're about $800 US. Um, depends where you get it from. 
uh, I'll, I'll put the link in the comments below and you'll see uh, these ones from uh, they're on Amazon and so this is the heavy duty one as I said you can, you can get the light duty one which is a, a couple hundred dollars cheaper um, but then you don't get this refractory cement and this is the 10 kilo size so there's obviously like a uh, a four kilo size uh, there might be a six kilo I'm not sure but yeah so this one in the heavy duty is about eight hundred dollars or so US um, and um, but yeah if you wanted a smaller one then no problem but if you're melting copper you know even if you're using a smaller crucible uh, there's nothing wrong with having all this you know, a bit of extra space if you uh, were serious about melting copper and aluminium and even cast uh, cast iron um, I'd probably recommend a, a 10 kilo size that way yeah it's going to give you a lot more flexibility in what kind of crucible you can put in there and um, and yeah maybe do other things like uh, IC chip pyrolysis so you can set up your IC chips ready ready for um, yeah but that's about the biggest size the A10 you're going to fit in these 10 kilo crucibles um, even though the A10 I think it's rated at 13 or 12 kilos in brass so which is uh, about the same as in copper so if this is 13 kilos in brass oh geez uh, it's about oh, you'd fit about a million dollars worth of gold in this if this if you fill this gold uh, right up to the top with gold pure gold it would be about a million dollars worth <laughs> so that's obviously never going to happen but yeah really excited you know and it's just my little Christmas present to myself and um, yeah I'm going to do a, a lot of copper melting projects for myself and and melting all kinds of metals and yeah and then use it as a as a template to actually see if I can get some of these made myself here um, you know like I said I'm no real I'm no real good at welding or anything but you know there are guys around you know and I know a few guys that know how to weld good and and see if they can um, come up with something like this because like I said uh, $800 US um, it's and then you know you can add a couple of hundred dollars US on for postage or more to Australia anyway uh, so if you buy this on Amazon in the US you'll get free shipping you know so uh, but these alone cost about a hundred dollars just this part here and I reckon it's the only thing you'd really need to buy if you're going to make one because you really want this regulator um, thing you know to adjust the airflow and stuff um, yeah ready-made I think they're, they're pretty cool and like I said there's there's a smaller one and then there's a real big one so if you're going to build a 20 kilo size furnace the only thing is you would have to put it on wheels because there's no way you're going to lift a anything much bigger than this you know because it's just this uh, refractory cement that's um, so I'm not sure if I need to uh, bake this in or you know wear it in or something like that run it in <laughs> uh, but I do need to uh, w treat this first time uh, on a low heat just the first time just to um, to get it all set set for uh, heavy heavy duty well um, melting all right well there you go guys that's my little Christmas present for the year uh, it's still going to be a little while till I actually fire it up because I've got to work out how to put it all together and take. Oh, actually, I've got to take it to the um, to the gas centre and um, yeah, get them to help me put it all together for me. So um, and that way, at the same time, they'll be able to tell me if this is a good one or whether I should go with a better quality one because uh, like I said I, I'm not really confident with gas so you know I want to make sure everything is spot on um, you know even the quality of this hose just want to make sure that it's it's the good stuff you know 
and I don't mind have you know buying fresh stuff if I want I might even get a longer one if it's possible because um, I want to keep the gas bottle as far away from this as possible uh, yeah but cooking with gas there you go all right guys well keep scrapping and uh, look out for some big copper melts coming up in the next uh, few weeks or so and um, yeah looking forward to making a whole heap of copper bars and selling some bars on eBay and you know this will probably pay for itself in no time um, and uh, yeah long term I think this will be a good one and even after a few years of heavy use uh, if the refractory starts wearing out can always redo it and put fresh refractory um, that's easy so awesome All right. I got actually I uh, just had to add I got the a little manual but it's all shredded up it's all ripped up so so I might have to contact them and get them to send me an email of whatever the information is on that but they did send uh, the refractory just a little sampling of refractory wool and so that's it there that's what's inside and it's kind of like um, it's woolly but it's also got some kind of uh, stuff in there it's a bit sc scrunchy but that's what's inside the uh, underneath this uh, refractory cement so they first line it with this and they put about uh, I think it's about a half inch of refractory cement over that so the cheaper one this is the heavy duty if you buy the cheaper one that's all you get it's just this wool and so obviously you know look this lasts a long time it's good stuff uh, but eventually you know obviously it's not heavy duty it's going to wear out and you're going to have to replace that a lot quicker so that's why I went for the heavy duty with that uh, cement um, but that's the stuff there and yeah it's just like a foamy wool and yeah interesting okay guys well that's my little Christmas present for the year I thought I'd just show you what I bought and done the little box opening and uh, there you go so as I said and that crucible it cost me about $120 so there are about uh, I've got a link um, in the description as well you can find these these are on Amazon for about $75 US but free shipping so that's not a bad price cheaper it's a little bit cheaper than I get them here because mine are 120 Australian which is about uh, 90 90 dollars US so but there you go that's the giant 10 kilo one and if you're going to, if you're serious about melting copper or aluminium or cast iron, um, you know, for a long term, I recommend going for the bigger 10 kilo one. But if you're only going to do small, small melts, occasional melts, then maybe go for the smaller one, uh, whatever that is, and you'll save yourself a couple hundred dollars there. But otherwise, I personally think it's uh, it's a good investment so far. Um, but we still got to fire it up and see how it goes. All right, guys, catch you next time.